In the previous video, we just learned how to create multiple inputs and multiple output models. There are two most useful features that I would like to cover. The first is shared layers, and the second is to extract, and we use the nodes from the graph of layers from the architectures. These two features are pretty useful, particularly when we are having some complex architectures or we want to reuse others' network. Let's dive into these two topics and get started. And other good use for the functional APIs are models that use shared layers. Shared layers, uh, you could consider it is like, like a layer instance that can be reused multiple times within the same models. They learn the features that corresponding to multiple paths in the graph of layers. Uh, say for example, shared layers are very often used to encode inputs from the similar space, say two different pieces of text that features similar vocabulary. These will enable those shared informations across different inputs, and they, that make it possible to train such a models on less data with higher accuracy. It, say, for example, if a given work is seen in one of the inputs, not the others, that will benefit the processing of all inputs that pass through the shared layers. To share a layers in the functional APIs, we can simply call the same layers instance multiple times. Uh, for, in, for example, here is an embedding layers across two different text inputs. So for the first, here we just create a layers of embeddings layers to which will be shared across two different text inputs. And then we have two different text inputs. The first is a text input A, that is the character input, and the other is a text input B. We also assign as a the character input. And then here you can see that we use the shared embeddings to process the text input A, and at the same time, we use the shared embeddings to process the text input B. So this shareability allows the embeddings, fun, embeddings layers to share the information across two different inputs and make it possible to train such a models on two different text sequence, so it allows the models to train with less data or provide a higher accuracy. In that case, say for example, if a given work in the test input A is seen in what in, in is seen in there, but uh, there's no such work in a text input B, so that will benefit the processing of all inputs that pass through these shared embedding layers. The final useful feature is that we can extract and we use the node in the graph of layers. Because the graph of layers we are manipulating is a static data structure or static architectures. Therefore, it can be assessed and also inspected and also we used it. And that is how we are able to plot the functional models as an image. This also means that we can assess the activations output of intermediate layers and we use them somewhere else. This is very useful for something like feature extractions and also transfers learning. Let's say, for example, we have a VGG 19, 19 models with weight trained that's on ImageNet. So we can just uh, import these from the TensorFlow and then we just assign it as a VGG19. And here we can see the intermediate activation functions, we can use a query to the, to the graph data structure and extract all these useful features. Um, so let's say, for example, in these, in these VGG layers, uh, we create a for loop, we just list out all these intermediate activation functions. So we just provide a layers.output, that is the output from these intermediate activations layers, 
and then we extract everything into a feature list. Once we have these features list, we can use these features to create a new feature extraction models that returns the values of the intermediate layers activations. How we can do that is that we create another functional API. We create another carrot functional API models with the input from this VGG uh, 19.input and use these feature list as the output. And this output is actually a features extractions models. And so once we have these features extractions models are being created, of course, we can then use it to process an image to extract the features from that image. Therefore, it's very useful for feature extractions and also very useful for the transverse learning. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we will have another hands-on exercise to build a residual network, namely Westlet, for image classifications with the use of functional API. So see you in the next video. Bye-bye.